Welcome to the third of our five-part seminar series. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Graham Davies, Governor of District 9685. The webinar series is uh, designed to be part of our online component of the district conference, our one-day district conference held on the 23rd of February this year. Now, tonight's webinar is a little unusual in that there's so many components to it, so please stay with us and particularly thank you for joining us. You'll have the opportunity throughout the webinar to send questions down the line. You just sit, type them in, the questions you'd like the panel or the presenters to answer, and we'll arrange for that during the course of the webinar. Now, the first part of the webinar is concerned with the vocational service area. And David Firth, who has a lot of experience in that area, will give us a comprehensive overview of vocational service and particularly the Pride of Workmanship Award. So over to you, David. Thanks, District Governor Graham. Um, tonight I'm here uh, representing uh, uh, Peter Kirkwood, who is the Vocational Service Advisor for District 9685. Peter is uh, away on business, so uh, I drew the short straw, I guess. But vocational service is, in fact, uh, a key part of uh, Rotary because it's, in fact, the way in which we all join Rotary uh, through our vocations and our classifications. So um, I might quote uh, what Paul Harris wrote. Each Rotarian is a connecting link between the idealism of Rotary and their trade or profession. The program in this district is divided uh, into three areas. Professional ethics, vocational support, and vocational pride and excellence. In professional ethics, the program explores the various circumstances which surround this topic through perhaps hypotheticals or through guest speakers. Then there's the four-way test competition. And the district uh, awards uh, a club in the district which conducts the most successful promotion of the Rotary four-way test. And finally, there's the four-way test speech competition for schools. And again, the district award is uh, focused on year 10 students uh, and encouraging uh, them to uh, promote the four-way test. Invocational support the key here is for Rotary and TAFE to develop links. Those links can uh, cover a wide range of uh, areas, but particularly in mentoring students of TAFE, providing scholarships for those uh, who are under cost pressures, supporting um, the various uh, and encouraging the various uh, areas of uh, international skills and uh, wor the World Skills uh, Australia uh, competition is uh, strongly supported by Rotary. Then there's the Apprentice Trainee Awards and clubs and the district make awards in this area. And finally, National Skills Week, which is the precursor for the World Skills Australia program. And the vocational pride and excellence. The first uh, area there is vocational excellence awards. These are the district awards uh, which are presented each year at the district conference. And in our district conference uh, which has just been held, there were three new awardees namely Professor John Rasco uh, for his research work into gene therapy, Mr Gerard Henderson, a noted author and journalist, um, well known through the Sydney Morning Herald, and Commissioner Shane Fitzsimmons, the Rural Fire Service in New South Wales, someone who is very familiar to those of us who watch uh, the news when their bushfires are around. The next area is Pride of Workmanship. 
And this is indeed, as Graham has suggested, an area that is dear to my heart. Uh, the club that I belong to, the Rotary Club of Pennant Hills, uh, started this program back in 1976 when we made our first awards for Pride of Workmanship. Uh, these awards have continued on ever since. We hold one every year and uh, make several uh, awards each year. And uh, we have branched out into promoting the program throughout Australia and New Zealand. And we also support that by providing uh, trophies uh, for that, uh, those awards. Uh, they can be purchased from our club. Finally, in this area is the Police and Emergency Services Officer of the Year Awards. This is a program which uh, was originated in District 9690 previously and is, uh, uh, provides an opportunity for clubs to recognise uh, notably police officers but also emergency services uh, personnel um, throughout the state. The emergency service areas that uh, are uh, covered are uh, the Ambulance uh, New South Wales, Fire and Rescue New South Wales, Marine Rescue New South Wales, pol the Police Force of course, the Rural Fire Service, the State Emergency Services and the New South Wales Volunteer Rescue Association. So that's a quick summary of uh, the vocational service uh, uh, program which is uh, uh, supported by district within our clubs. Of course, um, there are many uh, other avenues uh, that can be pursued in uh, vocational service, such as vocational visits and of course job talks by members. Can I ask, are there any questions? David, how do we get information on running the Pride of Workmanship program? That's a good question, uh, but I think the easiest way to answer it is um, I think every Rotarian uh, in this uh, country uh, receives Rotary Down Under. And our club uh, has a, an advertisement uh, in Rotary Down Under every month, which details uh, both phone, fax, and email uh, contacts. And uh, if uh, you contact uh, us, you'll in fact be contacting me. Um, I'd be delighted to send you um, our pro uh, program guide, which gives you a step-by-step -step, uh, uh, process for running the award system. A second question. Do you have some suggestions on how we can raise the profile of vocational service in our clubs on a regular weekly basis? Yes, uh, it's something that I, I know a lot of clubs uh, have, uh, for some reason, have great difficulty in determining uh, how to uh, involve uh, their club in vocational service. I've found uh, over the years that uh, quite a um, an adequate uh, way of introducing vocational service into the club uh, program is to have five minute job talks. And you can have those uh, as often as you like. You could have one uh, if you've got a large club with plenty of members, you can have one every week. Um, smaller clubs might uh, have one uh, less often, but uh, uh, this is an opportunity uh, for uh, members to explain uh, what their uh, business is or what their profession is, uh, perhaps what's new in their profession or job um, or industry. So uh, we've always found those um, very, uh, very uh, interesting. Well, thank you, David, and thank you, Pennant Hills, for the work that you do in vocational service. Pride of Workmanship is certainly one important component of that, and if you were able to just look slightly to my right, you'd see a person in the name of Les Whitcroft, whose photo's here at the Thornley office, and it was 
past district governor Les who actually introduced the Prior to Workmanship Award uh, to our district. So thank you, thank you David and thank you Les. In fact, I have a personal story about Prior to Workmanship in that my first introduction to Rotary was through Prior to Workmanship. Way back in 1981, in the Rotary Club of French's Forest uh, presented me with that award, which was which was very very uh, wonderful at the time. But the interesting thing is that the president of French's Forest was uh, Peter Gosling, and it was my great pleasure some years later, as president of the Rotary Club of Kincumber, to induct Peter into the Rotary Club of Kincumber. So that's my personal story about my first connection with the Rotary. The next. Uh, program that we're going to look at will be presented by Amanda Woods and the program's called Recognition of Youth Awards. Now this is a program that was uh, established in District 9690 and we are very very impressed with it and I hope after Amanda's presentation you are because we're keen to establish it in 9685. Amanda. Hi, my name's Amanda Woods from the Provisional E-Club of the Southern Cross and I'm here today to talk to you about ROYA, Recognition of Youth Awards, recognising and encouraging the contribution of youth to their communities. Now this program was originated in District 9690 and has been, we're looking to grow it through District 9685. Um, it's, it's been around for about 30 years now and is a school-based program where we recognise the contributions of our young people to their schools but more so to the community abroad. There's an application process there's revol involving primarily an application form. The application forms go out through the local schools and into community groups. Then the applicants are divided into two sections. The juniors, which is year sevens through nine, and seniors years 10 to 12. The application form involves a section noting involvement with their schools but primarily focused on their involvement with community groups and sometimes church groups, the community abroad, things like that. The third part of the application form is in reference to our Rotary four-way test and involves the students applying the test to their everyday lives and their work in the communities. Then, once the application forms come in, there is a judging process. They are judged on community involvement, community knowledge both locally and globally. The application of the four-way test and their little spiel about it and how it applies to their lives and communities. And then there is an interview each nominee is interviewed by a panel of approximately three to four judges. The panel is made up of Rotarians and Rotaractors. Then we have a fabulous award night where we invite all the nominees, parents, members of the school, like those who nominated them or other applicable. Each each nominee is awarded a certificate of recognition because the involvements and contributions these children are making is phenomenal. And every year we have more and more runners up based on the fact that we can't decide who the winner should be. Now the winners are given large plaques, which, well the school of the winners are given large plaques which they can display in the school foyer or administrative area. The plaques stay with the school for the year and are returned for the next year's awards. Each winner is also given a collar with their name on one of the tags. The awardee is allowed to keep that collar for a year and brings it back to the next award night. Each awardee is given a little plaque with the four-way test that they are allowed to keep. Now, Robert Barry is one of our Royal alumni. Now Robert is an amazing young man and without the Royal competition we wouldn't have come across him. Uh, we have a quote from Robert which you will see. Um, basically he says that although he was aware of Rotary, Royal is the program that brought it to his forefront. 
the program that really engaged him in Rotary. Now, he has been on national and international debating teams, involved in politics, and he's now looking to join Rotary, thanks to the Ro Royal Program. Um, Robert was our 2010 senior winner. He has been involved with the judging of the program each year since. He's also been involved with RIPEN. And like I said, he's now looking to join Rotary. Side point to my presentation is we are currently looking for a 9685 committee. We do have a couple of members, but we do need your assistance. So my contact details will be on the screen. Please get in touch with me either for more information or to join the committee. Are there any questions? Yes, Amanda, when do you anticipate Roya will be introduced? Well, we're looking at this calendar year, uh, possibly not this financial year. Um, as was tradition with 9690, the award night is held in September, mostly in recognition of what the students and applicants have done in that calendar year. So the application forms go out, we have the judge in all over about a three, four month period and then an awards night at the end of that. This is not a question but a comment that's been made online. Roya sounds like a great youth program to be, in, to be integrated into D9685, giving recognition to some of the young people giving of themselves beyond school. Would you like to comment on that? Absolutely. Um, that's why I guess we're so proud of it from 9690 and why we want to grow it through 9685. Um, there are a lot of young people out there who could possibly feed into Rotaract, um, but we're looking at their contributions. These young people don't even realise often that they're making outstanding contributions to their community by what they do. We're very proud of them and we want to encourage others by recognising the contributions these students are making. So much good. Another question, Amanda. Roy is, does sound like a great program. Was it s well supported by all the clubs in D9690? Absolutely. Um, in 9690, we did have a lot of support from the clubs. Uh, the applications were, however, rolled out directly to the schools. Because the program has been around for a while, we knew the schools, we knew the contacts in the schools and were able to put the application forms directly to the schools. This year, we're looking for the assistance of the clubs because we don't have a database of schools as yet. So we're going to put the application forms out through the clubs, hoping the clubs will get them to the schools and back to the committee. And there's a question from Lynn Davies. There was a program started on the Central Coast. Perhaps committee members can be found in that area. I'm happy to get committee members wherever we can. Um, we're keen to out, not just have 960 Rotarians on the committee. We want committee members from the 9685 family, so far and wide, welcome to contact me, please, um, and we'll see how we can make it work. Thank you. Well, thank you, Amanda, and I'm sure we'll hear a lot more about the recognition of youth awards. It's probably a good time to remind you that uh, we do invite you to submit questions, especially as in the next part of the program, which will be involving a Rotaract Youth Committee. But before we get there, I thought I'd just also do a promo for the continuing series of webinars that we are presenting. Next week, we'll have a webinar on, it's actually entitled, uh, Today's Research is Tomorrow's Treatment. And it's all about Australian Rotary Health, and we're fortunate to have the corporate manager of Australian Rotary Health, Terry Davies, who is a Rotarian at, uh, in our uh, district, to, uh, to present that. Uh, the following night, on Tuesday, uh, the presentation will be on women in Rotary, and that, of course, is quite timely as well, because Saturday is International Women's Day, and indeed, this morning I attended a breakfast sponsor 
sponsored by the Rotary Club of Norwest Sunrise, Bella Vista, uh, for uh, women, and it was a fantastic event. Okay, the next segment is a panel discussion. It's actually a Q&A uh, led by the uh, District Rotor Act uh, representative, Brett Sham, or I'm not sure, he might be Tony Jones. Whichever way it goes, this is sure to be entertaining. But remember, uh, your questions will be presented to this panel uh, once they have finished their Q&A. Good evening and thank you for joining us for our webinar on Rotor Act. I'm Brett Sham, the District Rotor Act representative, or DRR, and this evening I'm joined by three fellow Rotor Actors from our district. Chrissy Braden from Crossland's Rotor Act and the co-chair of the uh, Rotor International Rotor Act and Interact Committee, Ricky Leong from Macquarie University Rotor Act and the um, District Rotor Act representative elect, and Pip Hodgson from the Macquarie University Rotor Act Club and a former Youth Exchange student. Uh, tonight we'll be examining the current relationship between Rotaract and Rotary in our district and exploring ways in that Rotarians can get more involved with the Rotaract program. We'll be also ask, answering your questions, so if you, anything you, you, if you have anything you would like to ask, please send it through via the, um, the we uh, webinar. So to start things off, Chrissy, having, be having been in Rotaract for a long time, how would you describe the dynamic between the Rotary Clubs and Rotaract in our district? Uh, having joined Rotor Act eight years ago, I'm a bit of a seasoned Rotor Actor. Um, and in that time, it's been really interesting for me to see how the dynamics between Rotor Act clubs and Rotary clubs has evolved. Um, I've seen Rotary, uh, I guess that Rotor Act Rotary relationship um, in many different situations where it's been really strong. Uh, but I've seen it that relationship either work or not work for some very clear reasons. For me, the Rotary relationship that hasn't been the most beneficial to the Rotor Act Club is where the Rotor Act Club has spent a lot of time uh, working on the Rotary projects, but not actually cultivating any projects of their own. Uh, and that has, I guess, just allowed their members to not really have that sense of ownership that we generally try to encourage uh, with projects within Rotor Act. And then I've seen, uh, I guess, that Rotary Rotor Act relationship where it's been a really great partnership uh, I've seen numerous clubs within our district uh, have that relationship where they not only support each other's existing projects, but they also go out of their way to organise joint events and projects. Um, and having that healthy balance uh, between the two, I think, has uh, really been a beneficial uh, relationship for both the Rotary Club and the Rotary Act Club involved. Um, so it's just making sure we get that really great balance of uh, it being more of a partnership mm -hmm. than Rotary Actors just showing up and doing the legwork. Yeah. So it sounds like you know, Rotary Actors have achieved some great things in our district. Ricky, as the incoming DRR, I know you've got some bold goals and bold goals and ideas for Rotary Act for the next Rotary year. Do you want to share some of those with our audience? Thank you, Brett. The strategy for the new year can be summarised in one word, really, and I think that's engagement. So the first two planks of that are engagement with Rotarians, sorry, Rylarians, and engagement with Rotary Youth Exchanges. These are very, these are young people, but they're the kind of people who can contribute a lot to our club and to the district, and they're the kind, and they're already part of the Rotaract family. Um, so, as for the actions and something tangible you can do as Rotarians, what I'd really like is if you can tell them about Rotaract. If you go to our website, download our brochure, or the next time you have some of those people come back to your club to tell you about the experiences, invite a rotor actor along so we can also have a talk with them and just let, let them know about the opportunities that are out there. So they're the first two planks, engaging with Rylarians and engaging with Rotary Youth Exchange. The third plank is to engage with the community. Essentially we're going to take a page out of Rotary's playbook and that is to build our profile by being out there in the community, being visible and doing good work and I think that's something we can really learn from Rotarians and the way they do such a great job of that. Now the fourth plank is to engage the base and I really want to boost energy levels even further in the coming year. So what can you do as Rotarians? The first thing I think is to support Rotaract events and projects. We love having you along and we love your involvement and your engagement and it's a really positive thing for all Rotaractors. The second thing is to support our training by sponsoring Rotaract clubs through PETS and BETS and by sponsoring members to attend RILA. I think this is a really great way to train the leaders of the future and it's, it's something that we find really valuable. Thanks Ricky. I know some Rotarians I speak to um, feel like they can't engage with the Rotaract club because they're not a sponsoring Rotary club. 
uh, for any of our panellists here, how do you think that these Rotarians and Rotaract clubs can get involved with the Rotaract program and support the existing clubs? I don't think... It doesn't even necessarily have to be at a club level. If you are a Rotarian that's interested in engaging with the young people in Rotaract, go out there and, and introduce yourselves. Uh, I know for me, I, I have you know some really great friendships and working relationships with individual Rotarians, more so than with particular clubs. And this makes me more excited for my next step in joining Rotary because I've seen what great people are in that next step up. Um, but I think it also just provides a good... Uh, a, a, a starting place for you to link up with a club. I know that two members of my club uh, were approached by some Pennant Hills Rotarians about getting really involved with starting Ripen uh, in East Timor. Uh, last year and they were able to go over and facilitate that program with those Rotarians and I feel like that's been a really good starting point for a great relationship between my club and that club just because a few Rotarians and Rotaractors got together on a project. That sounds like a really great story about Rotarians and Rotaractors working well together. I'm sure as the co-chair of the RI Rotaract in and Interact Committee you must hear a lot about other stories about how Rotaract and, Inter uh, and, and Rotary uh, work together overseas and are there, are there any lessons that our district and our clubs could learn from the way these clubs work together? I think it's been really interesting seeing how different things are in different places around the world. Uh, for me, uh, hearing uh, particularly about stories from friends of mine who are Rotaractors in India. Uh, now, I'd love to rock up to a Rotaract meeting where there's 1,500 members in attendance. Now, that's never going to happen in Australia, certainly. But even though they have such a strong membership base, hearing the stories of how they work really hand in hand with their Rotary cl uh, clubs to get projects off the ground and to you know give their Rotarians fresh ideas and, and you know sort of some newer generations approaches to things is fantastic. The fact that their membership is so strong but they still cultivate a really close relationship with Rotary uh, and I think Rotaractors and Rotarians around the world could certainly learn from the example that, the, uh, that our Indian uh, friends have uh, set for us. Definitely sounds like there's a lot we can learn from those overseas clubs but I think there's also opportunities for us to learn from other youth programs that take place in the, in the district. So Pip, as a former Youth Exchange participant, you know, it seem, Youth Exchange seems to be very successful in our district, especially in the way that Rotary engages with young people from across the local community um, to take part in the program. You know, how, how do they do it and, and from how did you get involved and how do you think Rotarians could uh, get young people involved in Rotaract as well? Um, so from my experience, I was on exchange uh, the year after I finished high school, so I took that as my gap year. Um, and I think that Rotary Exchange was really successful in that they supported a lot of su um, high school events. Uh, for me, they supported the Model United Nations, and so they're really targeting those people who are in, um, interested in international community and really making a difference. Um, and so they really just supported those sort of um yeah, events. And then it in turn, the high school students got interested in Rotary because we thought, you know, an organisation that's giving so much to these people, I'd like to give back to them. Um, and also Youth Exchange really offered that opportunity of taking a gap year, but also doing something really meaningful. Um, and also, you know, developing as a person, having an amazing experience. So I think for Rotaract to do the same sort of thing, apply and really get involved in um, events for 18 to 30 year olds of the Rotaract young adults age and getting people interested in what Rotaract does. Thanks. And as, younger, as a younger and a newer Rotaractor, what are some of the things that attracted you to join Rotaract uh, and that perhaps Rotarians could tell other potential young members? So I'm in the Rotaract Club of Macquarie, which is with the university. And the three things that really brought me to that club to join was firstly the social justice aspect. So it's a unique and really valuable experience to meet and um, talk with like-minded people who are really passionate about making a difference in the wider community. And I was really excited to just meet so many people who are just really excited to do that same sort of thing. Um, also, we had the professional development aspect in that we have you know, teaching us how to write resumes and go for interviews, really setting us up for once we leave university, actually getting a job. And that's quite comforting to have people willing to teach you those sort of things. And lastly, uh, the social aspect. Coming into university and not knowing anyone, having a daunting idea of starting all over again at, for your education, but having these people who are so kind and so willing to talk to you and make sure you're settled in, it was a really nice environment. 
I would add to that, uh, might not be as fresh of a Rotoractor, but the thing that's kept me in Rotoractor over the years is the fact that the one thing that sets us apart from the so many other charities and uh, organisations that young people can get involved with these days is the fact that we're autonomous. We're not committed to working with just one charity or just one cause and whatever our current membership base is passionate about, that's the type of projects and, uh, and causes that we cultivate our projects and events towards and that's what keeps us engaged. The fact that we get to lead these things rather than just following, I guess, the structures put out by people before us and get to start our own initiatives, that's a sell that not many other organisations can offer young people that want to be the leaders, forget the future, of today. Yeah, it really sounds like Rotaract has a lot of a lot of lots to offer for young people out there in the community that some Rotarians may know. So it'd be great if they could get them involved with the program. Um, to to start wrapping things up, Ricky, as the incoming DRR, what's excuse me, what's your number one ask for the Rotarians for the next Rotary, Rotary year? Um, I'd like to ask all Rotarians a personal favour. Can you please reach out to your networks? If you know someone between the ages of eighteen to thirty, tell them, because there's one thing I've learned from Rotaract, and that's everyone who's joined has one thing in common. Somebody told them about it. Um, if you want, you can even go to our website and print off our brochure. Rotaract offers some incredible opportunities, and please just spread the word within your networks, and it'll make a world of difference. Thanks, Ricky. Um, thanks, Chrissy, uh, Chrissy and Pip as well for taking part this evening. Um, and are there any questions from our audience, Les? We have lots of questions. Great. The first is, what is the main reason that young people join Rotaract? Is it to give back to the community, social reasons, or for networking? I think all three. It depends on the person and, and where they are in their life. Uh, I, I joined at a time when I was heavily involved with scouting and many other organisations, but was really looking for a better way to make a bigger uh, impact in my community, and Rotaract has through and through proved to be the perfect outlet for me but I certainly know other people they've been new to new to the city uh, and uh, they've just wanted to find new friends in their new home and it's been that great sort of platform for them and then we've gotten them hooked on the the community aspects as well so we offer all three why, why just stick with one I'd also add international to that list because a lot of people join Rotaract because they get to travel internationally and meet Rotaractors internationally and that's something not a lot of organisations can offer and of course as Pip said earlier there's also the professional development side. Yeah. I know Ricky you've travelled a lot internationally through Rotaract do you want to give us a quick summary of where you've been and what you've done? I've been to India twice and Slovenia once with Rotaract. The experiences I've gained are just extraordinary because it's not travelling as one would normally travel. It's travelling with the locals, meeting the local rotor actors, and you really feel like part of that community and part of that club. And you learn a lot more about the culture and you get to take some of that learning back to Australia and bring that home with you. Uh, I don't have time to go into specifics, but it's a great experience. And this is something that's open to all rotor actors. It seems hard to believe it to believe, but uh, this question is, suggests that Rotaract has a higher turnover than Rotary. Do ongoing projects ever survive this membership turnover? Uh, the turnover, I think, is partly just because we're young. Our careers and our lives take us in different places, uh, but also just because there's only a maximum of 12 years you can be there, whereas Rotary, you can be around for decades. Uh, so I guess, for me, the standout example of a long-running Rotaract started project would be Splash for Cash, which uh, started in 1984, the year I was born, uh, and was a swimathon run by local cl uh, Rotaract clubs that raised money for the Royal Institute for Deaf and Blind Children. Uh, it, it's run for 30 years and in the last eight years I've really gotten to cultivate a great relationship with RIDBC helping build that event and even have Rotaract clubs in different cities around Australia running that event as well. Uh, so for me, the fact that an idea a Rotaractor had 30 years ago is still going strong is pretty exciting. And do you know how much money they've raised over that? Uh, time? Somewhere in the in the vicinity of $900,000. Wow. That's a so lot of money. In 30 years, yeah. so pretty, pretty cool. Yeah, it's impressive what Rotaractors can do. Is there another example of a local project that Rotaractors have taken from an idea to reality? I think Macquarie University Rotaract Club has some great projects that they do there. Do people or Ricky want to talk about those? One project I'd like to talk about in particular is Homework Help. That was conceived by our last president, Fran, and the purpose of that was really to help local school children do their homework and to, to have university students or people who can just sit there and be there for the children to help them 
answer questions and help with whatever other way they can. Uh, it's a great program. It's been running for two or three years now, and it's making a real difference to the local community. Thanks, Ricky. Can Rotarians attend the Rotaract pre-convention meeting? Definitely. Definitely. Uh, Rotarians, young and old, are most certainly welcome to come and join us at the pre-convention. Uh, it runs for the two days prior to the convention be beginnings. So that's the 30th and the 31st of May. Uh, and it's just $44 as an add-on to your convention program. Um, and it will just help you to really see uh, what rotor actors around the world are doing. We're expecting around 400 rotor actors to attend. Uh, and there are lots of sessions that talk about that, you know, bridging that gap between rotor actors and Rotary both in terms of forming a healthy relationship but then also recruiting those Rotor actors into Rotary when the time comes. So if you want to be part of that conversation uh, or just see what the young people are doing and get revved up about the future of Rotary then we certainly would love for you to come and join us. And I think Rotarians have a lot of ideas and, and knowledge through their years of service that they can share with the Rotor actors at the pre-convention and a lot of these discussions so you know there's a lot of value they can bring to the pre-convention meeting. Do you think Rotor actors should join Rotary after they turn 30? Have you seen anyone who has made a success of it? Uh, Amanda, who you saw before, and uh, and Jade, who's working busily behind the scenes, are two fantastic young Rotarians that have made the, made the leap. I turned 30 at the end of the year, and I'm quite excited about uh, where I'll land in, in the Rotary world. I, I know it'll be somewhere, and it'll be quick, because I just can't imagine a life without Rotary and Rotaract being part of it. Um, but I think it's just a case of... Yeah, starting that relationship early. I, I don't think Rotarians should wait until a Rotaractor is, you know, 29 to start starting that conversation uh, because it's it's start, just starting those friendships. I don't have a lot of Rotarians that are actively trying to recruit me. They're just being friends with me and working on ideas, sharing with me, and that's what makes me want to go and check out their clubs. It's just having that relationship in advance um, and knowing that they want us. That's Knowing that we can join, that's, that's a big one as well. So definitely get the word out there. What kind of Rotary Club appeals to you? Ooh, tricky. Uh, for me, uh, I'm, t I'm torn. I'm torn between whether I want to join an existing club um, and, and be that young voice uh, in, a, in a club that might not have very many young members um, because I get married at the end of the year and I'll be looking at children in a few years and that's going to be hard to be a, a Rotarian and, and, and to have a young family, especially when my partner is interested in joining Rotary as well. Um, or do I go out and start my own club of, of young Rotarians and make it a cocktail club that is, is a bit cheaper and, and a bit less of a, a time uh, commitment because I think those are the biggest barriers that young people find. But there are a lot of existing clubs out there that I am definitely keen in checking out to give them that chance because uh, th I see the projects they do and how could I not want to be part of that? I think it's also important that the Rotary Clubs um, you know, appeal to what young people are interested in doing and what they're looking for as well as being flexible enough to work around the life uh, of young people so you know gone are the days people work nine to five that they worked you know it was an easy commute to the city people now you know I generally work till 6 30 most evenings it's hard to get to a meeting that starts at 6 30 or 7 um, so I think and I'm you know, looking for a lot of the different things so flexibility looking for friendships I'm looking for professional development opportunities networking so I think rotary clubs really need to think about are they offering the things that young people want in a rotary club would an e-club be an option it's an option, but I don't know that it's necessarily the solution for all young people. I know a lot of young people who have transitioned to Rotary by joining an e-club, but for me it's the friend, I'm a hugger. I can't hug people at an e-club meeting, but just the fact that you, uh, for me, you form better relationships um, and friendships in person than you do in an e-club setting. So whilst that does solve the time and, and uh, you know, sort of commute gap for a lot of people and the expense gap, um, it doesn't necessarily fill that social um, interaction that some people might be looking for out of out of a rotary experience. So it's, it's one answer, but it's certainly not the only solution to getting young people involved. I think, yeah, like Chrissy said it's part of the solution so that it's a great way if the person can't attend a meeting uh, uh, attend a meeting in person that they can attend via via the internet just like tonight via the webinar you're not here with us but you're still seeing us through the screen a writer act is interested in rotarians becoming mentors <laughs> um I don't know, i'm quite a new rotor act member uh but i was thinking that a aspect or an advantage that Rotary Exchange does have with Rotary is that interaction between the two of exchange students attending Rotary meetings. So perhaps something 
to that effect of having those Rotary members just to have as a call upon and, you know, of the wisdom and experience they have as just a way, yeah, for a bit of a backup and a support for the Rotaract members, that could be quite helpful. I know I've been involved with running a lot of bigger events, especially conferences. Uh, so for me, just having a few Rotarians sitting on those committees with us and offering us their advice um, and their experience um, has been a really great thing because we only have a limited experience. And so be able to be able to learn from others that have, uh, have done the same sorts of things or different things before has certainly helped us to come up with a better end product. Um, so I think it's been really great to have those just even mentors within that project or event, uh, you know, sort of time frame. I agree. I, we are the future of Rotary and I think just that wisdom and that learning and that experience, I think that's really valuable and I've personally found that incredibly useful. Are Rotarians welcome at Rotaract meetings? Definitely. And um, at the same time, Rotaract is really interested in attending a lot of rot Rotary meetings as well. So if your club has an interesting speaker, or um, as like Ricky said earlier, a youth exchange or a rile, a rile participant, invite us along to your meeting as well. But get in touch with your local Rotary Club, rot Rotaract Club, sorry. The details are all on the website and find out where, where and when they meet and say that you'd like to come along and meet them. But also come with an open mind. Our meetings might not look quite the same as yours. I know my club, we don't have guest speakers. Uh, and if we do, they're members of our club talking about something they're passionate about. Um, but it's a lot more informal and our our meetings are where the action happens. We don't have a lot of committees working outside of meetings. We get the work done at meetings as well. Um, so just come in with an open mind to see how Rotaractors do things. And bring any young people that you know along with you as well. That too. Slightly different question. Which I'm not sure how to pose, but <laughs> what about a regular club meeting with an e-club component? How would that work? I don't know about the technology side of things, but I think that that 